So today is March 1st, which means it is now springtime. And it's actually really nice out here for being only the 1st of March. But this year we're going with two rice fish ponds. And by that, I mean, we have the one from last year, which is over there. That is 35 gallons. But this one is going to be kind of a budget build. And what I mean by that is everything in here besides the fish should be altogether about under $80. So everything else is coming later this week, but I thought I would start off with the main uh, stuff that we have here right now. And this itself right here, oh, there's an earthworm in there because it rained last night, but this is a kind of wine barrel replica from LNG Solutions. And I got this at Lowe's. It is 46.26, uh, I'm 46.62 quarts, which translates to about 12.3 gallons. And I got this at Lowe's for about $15. And it is frost resistant, which is good for winter. And it doesn't heat up very much, which is awesome. So it's also water resistant too. But this is going to be our main patio tub. And as you can see right here, the main takeaways to take away are this doesn't have any drainage holes. And what I mean by that is that something like right here, it doesn't have any holes where water can exit, which is very good. And while it does have punchable ones, you have to punch really hard to get the holes out. So completely water resistant and no water gets out. And I tested this yesterday, so you can see kind of it right there, but that's just water from last night's rain. But this really works well as any uh, pond. So you can put white clouds in here, guppies, endlers, paradise fish, even dwarf rainbows if you wanted to. I know a lot of people here in Washington like to house some tropical fish over the summer because it gets kind of hot here. Uh, you can't do it year long though because they'll die in the winter and fall, but this pond I'm going to be using for rice fish only. And the other thing that we have here is this nine inch planter. Uh, I'm not exactly sure it's by, it's something else on the website, but this is a self watering one. So it's got these little um, exits right here that you can place water in. This I would only recommend if you're keeping aquatic plants or bog plants in here, because as you can see, if we put it in to the middle, it doesn't reach all the way out. So water is 100% getting in here. And if we're looking to keep a plant that doesn't like very moist soil in here, then I would recommend something that goes a little bit taller than here, but it's perfectly fine for now. And everything in here combined is about, I think $21. So we're already starting off pretty good. And all the plants, the soil and everything like that should arrive this later this week. So I'll cut to that when that's here. So today is the 5th and this week we got the rest of the stuff in and it's actually Friday today which is really nice so I can probably edit this uh, later tonight. Right now and what their purpose is. So this plant right here, the really big one, I got two pots of Hydrocaudal Verticulata and this stuff is really awesome. I've never had it myself but I saw it in one of uh, Ryu Watanabe's videos on his rice fish pond it was the one where he went to that uh, clay pot store and they had all those different rice fish for sale but after seeing that and kind of how it's progressed over time in his pond as well as looking up some pictures on the internet i decided this year for the mini pond to go with some of this stuff and if you hear the noise i am wearing an umbrella right now because it was raining just a couple minutes ago but this grows these really awesome leaves and their other name is called the mushroom plant i believe and that is very accurate in the way that its leaves grow which are kind of like in if this one will flip over these mushroom shapes so i got two pots of that and the other stuff i got is salvinia cuculata and it did come in a little bit of a rough shape but it's starting to perk back up especially with all the sunlight and I could have gone with just the verticulata, but since I'm having rice fish in here as well, I'd rather go with the plant that I know that they'll uh, put the eggs on. And since I successfully bred the red caps last year uh, in a good amount of, in a good quality, uh, I have gone for another Salvinia species again, but who knows, maybe they'll breathe on the verticulata, but the cuculata adds a, another nice uh, texture as well as more surface cover and as soil we are using dyna dirt and the only place i've seen this where you can get this is home depot and they don't sell in store so you have to buy it online and then go pick it up at the store or have it delivered to you but this stuff works really well it's only my second time using it but last year i did use this stuff 
for the uh, iris over there, which is actually over there. Surprisingly, it survived through the winter, but this species is pretty hardy in Washington weather, so it made it through the winter. But I would recommend this for bog plants, just like the iris, or if you're using aquatic plants for the pond, such as lilies and other stuff like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the pot, pour some of it in there, put the roots of the reticulata in the soil a little bit, and then cover the base of the plant with more diner dirt and then just top it off with some river gravel as this prevents the soil from leaching out into the water. It also makes a really nice layer for beneficial bacteria. So I'll get to that right now. So it's super cold outside right now, so I'm wearing gloves. But right now we can see that I'll explain what I did. So basically halfway through the pond i dumped in a bag of dino dirt so maybe like around here and then i planted uh slightly planted the roots of the verticulata into the dirt and then once they were kind of settled into there i dumped some more dino dirt so it went about maybe right here and then this is the gravel so basically you could go with normal aquarium gravel but this stuff from home depot i decided to go with it uh the same thing as last year since the amount you get for how much you pay i think the bag is about six dollars and you get about i think 25 pounds of it it'll last you a very long time so i've had the same bag for about a year now it was used in the iris over there and then now it's being used in here but again the gravel will prevent the soil from leaching into the water and i didn't fill it up all the way because i don't want to choke the plant and as well as some other stuff i'm going to house in here with the rice fish which i'll explain later but that's really how easy it is to plant this and now if we kind of carry it over it's getting dark out here now that's spring but just kind of plant it in the center and that is how it looks right now and we'll get this filled up but this pot doesn't exactly fit the entire center because there's some uh grooves uh in the center of the wine barrel but you can kind of find a spot if you want to that kind of supports it all right that's pretty good but the reticulata hopefully now if it does grow and it should get warmer around here soon this stuff will basically grow out of the water and it'll make this really nice uh puffy bush of mushroom shaped leaves across the surface and depending on how the barrel is placed and where you want the plants to grow you can move the pot around of course but for now i'm having it grow in the center and i'll leave the link to everything down in the description below but for the amount of reticulata i got uh each one of these shoots should be growing a leaf it is pretty awesome so we'll get on to the other parts of this since there are a couple more steps and i'll be back with that all right, so it's the next day and I really wanted to get this video uh, edited yesterday, but it became too dark to actually film. And when I just got home today, it's actually still pretty dark outside. Uh, so I'm just gonna use a flashlight to record the rest of this. But as you can see, I added all the water. I'm not exactly sure what this is. I think it's still part of the tag that was on the bottom of here. So I'll have to get that out, but as you can see, a lot of the salvinia has been perking back up. There's a lot less brown than there was earlier uh, when it came in, and the reticulata is also perking up. Uh, the, some of the leaves got kind of uh, snapped like that in uh, shipment, but everything should be perking back up. I actually had to refill this again. I did try to last night, and oh boy, it's starting to rain again. All right, let me go get an umbrella. So like I mentioned just before I got interrupted, I did fill this up last night, but the reason I had to uh, do a massive water change and refill it back up again is because I made the mistake again of not filling up the center pot first again, because if you do fill up the main pot itself, then what happens is since there's a little bit more space in the middle of the pot, the water will flow inwards and then it will make this really bad disturbance. So the soil ends up coming out so what i did was i added some more gravel and you really want to kind of start by filling off most of the the wine barrel itself and then once it gets to a little bit less than where the center pot is you want to fill up the, that pot so that when you fill up the rest of it it really doesn't 
interrupt anything or disturb stuff so you end up getting with this much cleaner look there is still some debris like you can see some white stuff right there and there's a couple of gravel uh, pieces of gravel over there but water changes will help with that and yeah that's really how you will make a really cheap rice fish pond well it's not just a rice fish pond you can use this for other things like guppies white clouds i think paradise fish as well but in my case i'm using this as another rice fish pond so this is really how you make just a super easy patio pond and it doesn't take much money to make i'm going to do all the calculations right now and i'll come back with the actual results but you can see how when the reticulata grows it grows this really nice uh, kind of mushroom kind of uh, clover leaf style and you can see all the roots right there and the plant itself so each one of these sprouts will grow a leaf like that and it'll get really nice and bushy but without but out of the way I'm gonna do the calculations for how much this actually costs in total so I'm back with the calculations and it's also raining a lot more so the audio might be a little messy but in total everything the wine barrel replica the pot in the middle the pea gravel the dinosaur and the plants everything in here costs together 60 dollars in total so this is a really good budget option especially if you live in like an apartment or a place that doesn't really have a very big backyard and you can also even use this inside too if you have a spot and can provide some artificial light but you don't even need a filter for this or an air pump you can if you want to but the plants will take care of everything especially since this is a lot smaller than the 35 gallon one the plants especially the salvinia and with how big the reticulata will get hopefully or i should say hopefully get the filtration will come by the plants uh filtering the water and the gravel providing some biological filtration so with that i'm going to do two more things and since this isn't a part of the build itself and this is completely optional i won't count this as part of the budget but this is also another thing you can do that only adds on about 15 dollars so i will get to that right now so this is fritz zyme 7 and basically what this is it actually says on the bottle this is live nitrifying bacteria and this is the good kind of bacteria that you want in your cycle and basically when you compare when you combine this with something that produces ammonia you can cycle your tank within days not even a month which is what you would normally have to do when cycling it when you first start out if you combine this with something that produces ammonia whether it be dr tim's ammonia in a bottle or just adding a couple pieces of fish food such as frozen shrimp then you can get the cycle going extremely fast and even at the same time you can even add fish to this i know super design does this and he's been pretty successful since the fish do provide ammonia and if you're adding this at the same time as the fish the fish won't get as much of an ammonia burn so they'll most likely survive through it i haven't done this myself yet well actually i did with the guppies and every one of the guppies if uh anyone's wanting an update is still alive except for the ones that had those disabilities so i guess nature just did its thing but just want to add some of this and then i'll get the second item which i have which will combine very well with this so this right here is Dr. Tim's ammonia chloride in a bottle. And basically you want to pair this up with any other live nitrifying bacteria product, whether it be if you're doing salt water, such as Fritz Turbo Star or Fritz Zyme 9, like I just use for fresh water. Like its name suggests, it is just literally ammonia in a bottle. And this stuff is really cheap for how long it lasts. Depending on what tank size you're going for, it might run out within the run or you might have a couple tanks to set up and still have this bottle around which is actually what i've been doing i've had this for about two setups now so this is the third setup it's going into but the new recipe calls for four drops per gallon but i would still recommend reading the label since i guess they're still selling some of the old formula which calls for one drop per gallon so just do as the instructions say and you should have a very fast cycle and might even be able to add fish within the same week so I really hope you guys enjoyed this really cheap and easy patio pond build. And I guess for now, I'll just, for the last couple minutes, I'll go over about what I'm having in here since this is gonna be super important and super special to me. The first thing I wanna add in here uh, pretty soon are Neo Caradina shrimp. Not sure what kind. I know they can be housed out here uh, because I live in Washington State, if you didn't know, and Corey, also the uh, owner of Aquarium Co-op, has housed cherry shrimp out here, and his story was that they were able to survive under the ice when it actually froze over, and considering it's springtime right now, I think it might be doable. I might wait until maybe May or the end of April 
to where it warms up a little more since obviously it's raining a lot right now but he was able to get some super dark red cherry shrimp out of having them outside so what i'm thinking is maybe i can go with something like blue velvets or blue sapphires and see how bright those get or something like the yellow gold backs where i can see how back uh or how yellow the back gets on those shrimp housing outside but the other thing in here is about the madaka so this year i won't be going with madaka from aquatic arts for this pond specifically i might do some for the uh 35 over there or i might house the rainbow shiners out there uh i still yet to decide but if you want to know the rarest madaka in the states right now that you can find for sale uh, i found is the red caps and i was successful breathing those last year wasn't successful raising the babies due to some uh poor mistakes by me but the most common one you can the most common ones you can find are the pearl whites the silvers the golds and sometimes the oranges the other rare ones you can find for here are this light black color the red caps and then there's the blues but this year i'm actually importing some madaka from japan and i'll put a picture up on screen of what they could look like i don't have any images yet since the sellers have told me that shipping from japan is halted right now but it should open up pretty soon but this variety i don't believe is in the states right now i'm pretty sure that only a select few people are keeping these I don't even think Steve from Aquarium Zen, who's the owner of Aquarium Zen, uh, actually has these. I know he has some really awesome ones. Like, I think he has the tricolor uh, Shohaku, I think they're called, uh, which is super desirable strain. Uh, so my goal is to get three breeding pairs. He, uh, he sells them in pairs, the uh, person I'm buying them from. So I hope right off the bat, once they get selling, they might start breeding. But... It really depends on the quality that i go for i think there's like a mid table quality and then there's a higher quality i think i'll set for mil sell for mid table right now just so i can see how well they do out here and then if they do well and start breathing i'll import some of the higher quality ones but this year's gonna be super awesome i might be one of the only couple people in the u.s keeping these and i hope to start distributing them uh distri distributing them out to local stores such as Aquarium Zen, Aquarium Co-op, Sierra Fish and Pets, places like those, and maybe even sell online as well, like through eBay. Although I've never shipped fish before, Madaka are super hardy. I know this from personal experience, which you can watch the video up in corner uh, in the corner. But this pond is going to be housing some very special fish, and I want to make sure to take every step to to make sure that they are successful and settle down well. So with that out of the way. Please consider subscribing if this did help you and you're thinking of setting some, uh, up something like this since patio ponding or tubbing is really fun and it can be used as a super easy uh, breathing, for profit, breathing for profit strategy. I don't know why I'm mixing up my words today, but please consider subscribing if this did help you and you really want to see the Madaka come in as well as liking the video and sharing it around to help other people with this and with that out of the way. My name is Northwest Fishkeeping, signing out.